everyone, welcome back to Hourglass Season 2, Episode 12. Guys, we are into a new month, and normally what that means for Hourglass is that we're going to start new project. Uh, however, since summer is upon us, and a lot of the players have IRL stuff, they're super busy, and we have a lot of big projects underway, I have asked that this month be a cleanup month, so that we can finish the three main areas that we have started, uh, which we are not in any of those three <laughs> places. So um, it's it's more for so we can finish spawn and slash farms, the nether hub tunnels, and the end island. So this does count as technically month one item uh, because as some of you may know, there is that huge uh, OP farm behind us, but it's not super OP yet because we still have a lot of spawning spaces because what we decided to do as the server, mostly me, <laughs> was to completely gut the nether around it. Also, I gotta be careful because we're super exposed out here. But as you can tell, ta-da! We are making so much progress on this giant dig. So we are almost done with clearing out all of the blocks. Instead of just buttoning and spawn proofing, we have, whoops, hello. We are working on digging this area out. So what I've been doing is I've just been doing big, big um, like swaths of this at a time. Um, and what Burke has been doing is digging a chunk at a time, like in rows. So between the two of us and several other members on the server, um, oh, okay, <laughs> uh, we came in, we cleared out all of the bedrock, all of the netherrack and blackstone and, um, basalt that was inside of the bedrock and then we're gonna clear out all the rest of this but this is why up here is making it so we don't have the perfect rates at the farm yet because we're still having lots of spawning up here the piglins the endies the magma creams are all spawning up here um so this is going to be one of the first projects we have to get done this is one massive big dig, but we also still have that other big dig in the end. And I haven't gotten to show what that looks like, but we got it done. Uh, so let's go ahead and fly out there. This is not the most efficient way to get to the end. It's just the way that I'm the most familiar with. Uh, we do have a tunnel that, ouch, that connects to the uh, nether fortress farm, but I almost never use it just because I'm so used to this. This was like the day one method of getting out there was cutting across that big open area. Uh, but one of the other plans I have is to get these tunnels, oops, hey, I missed my turn, uh, to get these tunnels out another couple stretches in this month so that they connect to all of the primary farms that we have already out uh, in the world. So once we get to the end, I will show you guys what we're starting with today. So we're gonna have a meeting with the members of the server to plan what we want to do because once we got the end island dug out uh we haven't done much of anything else we we uh are, we're testing some of the technical elements for the end island uh reset and there are a lot more considerations than i anticipated so um just love this appreciate this for the dig that it is and then I think what I'll do here let's turn on shaders just because this is how we saw it the most that is not what I wanted to do <laughs> it's been a hot minute since I turned on my shaders apparently um this is how I saw it most while we were doing the glass on the bottom because the glass was hard to see when we were placing it in the void but when we turn on the complementary shaders they have this cool effect in the end sorry this is a lot slower than I thought it was going to be. So they have this cool nebula effect and all these stars. Really pretty uh, to be able to see the um, like sky underneath your feet. So we've got two main considerations that we've got to do. We want to keep the ability to fight dragons for later in the season, uh, which means anything at that level or above needs to be end safe blocks, which means that the dragon doesn't reset them. 
But then also anything down here, we're going to be able to uh, basically use our creative imagination for the city. Uh, so the city is going to go down here, but the platform up there for killing the dragon uh, needs to be endstone or something uh, obsidian or crying obsidian, I think. Also, lodestones are considered dragon safe, but they're volatile in the end. Uh, they only work in the nether dimension, so we probably won't use those anywhere that players can interact with them. <laughs> uh, but they are end safe, and so one of the things that I'd like to do now is I want to take you to creative where I can talk a little bit more about the restrictions we have along the top here because the tops of the towers was going to be one of my first projects. I had an idea for how to disguise the towers. The towers always reset, but I didn't know that there was a few other considerations with the tower reset. So let me take you into creative and uh, show you what I'm talking about and then I'll also come back here once we've got the city plan um, kind of marked out and a better idea for what what we're gonna do to connect the um, entrance area to the, whoops <laughs> to the portal area, have a fighting area, and what we're doing with the city. There's so many considerations, but I think once we have a brainstorm session with the server members on what we would like uh, to do here, we're going to at least be able to get started. So. I will be right back uh, with you guys in creative. And welcome into my creative test world. Uh, I had never been into the end in creative until this past couple weeks when we've been making plans for the end island. So now as you look around, you'll see I'm right in the middle of the island, but as I pan up, <laughs> It looks a little different, uh, maybe, than you're used to seeing the end look. So this is the science that I was doing um, in order to determine what kind of builds we can do in the end. So I respawned the dragon here many times. Um, let's see. Or maybe just one in this world. I had a couple different worlds. So this world, it looks like I only did one. Yeah, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly starting to remember this because I was, like I mentioned, I was doing testing in a bunch of different worlds. So let's talk about a couple different things that happen when you respawn the dragon. Uh, the very first thing that happens is the end crystals start to generate into the world. So they come in at the top of these towers with the like the nice fancy beams of light, pew, 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 and they load in all the way around the ring. And then once the last one spawns in, I'm so I'm using this as the starting one, so it goes uh, clockwise around the ring. And then when it gets to the last one, boom, dragon respawns. And at the time that the dragon respawns, the towers, out of obsidian, all of the obsidian from the top of the tower down to Y1, where the first blocks are, all of the obsidian completely resets. That's why a lot of people use these as, um, or before bartering became a thing, these were, these were the best way to farm obsidian because it was infinite. All you had to do was respawn the dragon and all of it would come right back. So we can't build into, let me grab a block, we can't build into the uh, tower, even with non-destructible blocks also, because the whole obsidian tower resets. And then additionally to the tower resetting, there is this interesting pattern of block spaces that just get completely deleted. Now, I originally thought it was just a small space around the end crystal, like an end crystal explosion. So like if you have, you know, a build block, for example, let's try this. This is live testing with Zelda, so we know it's not gonna work quite right. Uh, like the fact that I can't place blocks, so that's cool. <laughs> um, let's get an end crystal. So when you have an end crystal in like, for example, the overworld, I can't place two next to each other. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, when it explodes, poof, all of the, uh, Res non-resistant blocks uh, go away. So I always thought it was that, but it's not actually an explosion. It completely resets the space around it because even using um, the crying obsidian or obsidian itself in these spaces, 
it deletes, it resets everything. So it goes down the towers to make a box. So if you look at this, what happens here is all of the space in this cutout here uh, that would create a box gets completely filled all the way down to Y level 66. So this is one of the concerns uh, that I was not, I, I honestly, I was not prepared for. Um, I, I did not expect this box around it uh, to be a thing, nor did I expect to have a 21 by 21 cube of space that we cannot build in. Um, I measured it out with note blocks. So it, what it is is it's 10 direction or 10 blocks in all directions from where the end crystal spawns. Uh, so we get these massive spaces that we can't uh, build anything in. So one of the other things I noticed is that they don't quite overlap anywhere that I can tell, but they do touch. So it's not even like we could do something in between the pillars because several of them, uh, the boxes, the boxes come into uh, close relation to each other. So now this is not the seed world from Hourglass, but I'm anticipating that it works the same. So like if there's a small tower that's a bit closer to a big one, it could likely, you know, come in contact. So basically what we're going to take out of this is the idea that uh, we're not going to build on tops of the towers or anywhere like uh, up to this 66, the 66 level here um, uh, next to the tower. So that was a little bit of interesting sciencing and I... I honestly am very shocked and I think that this is one of the main reasons why people don't build on the end island. Uh, there are a lot of stipulations for what you can get away with because then other than these resets, the, oh, the other reset is slightly easier to talk about. I think most everybody knows about this reset, but the five by five block around here. so. 5x5 five five platform and then the four air spaces above it, that area gets completely reset every time the dragon is respawned as well. You can't have anything in there or it gets deleted, which someday, someday I will tell the story of my first dragon fight where I did not know that piece of wisdom. Uh, that was an interesting day, but that day is not today. So back to the science. In addition to the pillar resets, then you also have everything at the fountain level, and I think it's about three blocks beneath. The dragon flies through some of these blocks, and if they are not end safe blocks, uh, those get reset too. <laughs> so wherever the dragon can fly, when you respawn the dragon, it will delete any blocks that are not end blocks. So anything with obsidian and end stone, basically, uh, are the only things that I know of that are safe. We didn't test that one extensively because our, uh, our method to combat the block deletion is that we're building lower, where we took our build down to Y0 um, or Y1. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have a fighting arena at this height and not, uh, <laughs> not, uh, not, not chance the block deletion. So block deletion, tower resets, uh, big boxes of resets and end safe blocks and dragons are a pain. <laughs> so that was, that was my sciencing. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. We were going to write a data pack, but I want to keep it as vanilla as possible. I think uh, I'll explain that a little better next. Hello. And Zelda is back with you at the moment and we are flying high, high above the end island. And as you can tell, we are actually slowly descending um, because those outer rings just popped into existence, the extra ones down below. And very soon, we're going to see the fruits of many, many hours worth of planning. Now, it's been a long time since I've used, oh, there we go, slow falling potion. So I didn't know how long it would take for this to come into render distance, but this is uh, the future city, uh, the future futuristic city. And now it does look 
kind of crazy. Um, there are a lot of things going on here that I will hopefully be able to uh, remember and explain a lot of. So the very first thing is that yes, I am being super uh, optimistic about the number of builds we can get in. <laughs> Um, and I have already told all the server members when I was getting started planning that these are just wild, crazy ideas from Zelda's mind as I've been thinking of futuristic uh, cities in general. And kind of the plan is that I'm laying out all kinds of unique geometric shapes uh, so that we can have fun building different types of buildings that's not just regular, you know, houses and squares and stuff. The city is meant to be super ultra modern slash even futuristic. And so there's going to be um, places where <laughs> the build's uh, shape is strange, the connections to other builds might exist and go over paths, um, and so basically the colors don't mean anything except for some of the white wool which I'll get to in just a moment, um, but I used pink and cyan wool and carpet because that was what we had the most of. We had uh, four shulkers of pink wool and three shulkers of cyan wool at the, at the wool farm, and uh, I knew I was going to use a lot of wool, and it was actually really smart because the server members actually that were helping uh, with the project are like, why don't we use carpet? Because then it is spawn proof. And, ah, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, it's been a while since I've used slow falling, so I'm not super familiar with it. Um, so let's start from the top down. So as you would remember from the considerations that we talked about in creative, we can't do very much with the pillars. Um, the tops of them have that 10 by 10 by 10 square of box kind of space that resets around them. And then the pillars themselves completely respawn. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to treat the pillars as kind of the core of the city, the ancient city that's going to, or the modern city um, is all built around this ancient uh, city in the center. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a floating island in the center where we can still fight the dragons. Um, we want to be able to keep that open for future use. And also, let's see. Oh, yep. I knew it. I, I'm like, I, I know how long I've been talking. We're almost out of slow falling potion. That's hilarious. Um, so the center island is going to be floating um, at the level of the fountain. And it does have to be made out of end safe blocks that the dragon's not going to reset. Um, and so it's going to be endstone, obsidian, crying obsidian, stuff like that. And uh, one of the ideas that I proposed for disguising it um, was to make a storm cloud on the underside. So that storm cloud from the fighting ring that's going to be in the center, and we think it's going to come all the way out to the pillars, um, is going to be feeding this central circle here that is going to be a main waterway. Um, it's going to be pretty much a giant lake uh, water feature in the center of the end. Um, so that's probably going to be the most boring part, unfortunately, and that was something that we had the option. Uh, we do have a community member who was going to try and write us a data pack, but I want to keep the server as vanilla as possible. So um, I'm not going to go through with that because what he was going to do was try to program it so that the end towers don't go through the reset, but we can resummon the dragon. Uh, but I wanted to use the vanilla Minecraft restrictions and pretty much the area above the fountain up to the end crystals is going to be very reminiscent of what the main end island looks and feels like, but everything else is going to change. So we'll stay up top and we'll talk about these. I'm calling them the orbits. I don't know if there's a better way, but we're calling them the gateway orbits. So as you can tell, there's three of them. Um, and we're we're still trying to decide if we're going to make them out of end safe blocks 
also because if something happens and for some reason a dragon glitches out into the void uh, somehow if they glitch through one of these portals which um, some of the servers have seen uh, some of the members have seen on other worlds um, if they head back to the main island they will blow through anything at this level so it's still a decision point but what we got was these circles now oh my goodness let me tell you Burke and I spent probably uh way way too much tra time trying to count out this ring we did the ring with the end gateways first and holy buckets I had heard a lot of people talk about how weird this end island structure is um and no joke seriously no joke these things don't always line up like this one and the one across from it are off by a block so like where this one is at zero the other one on the other side is negative one and they're like oddly spaced and so what i ended up doing uh is i just went into creative and I made a big circle, 200 diameter circle uh, with world edit. And we just, we placed the schematic and copied it. Actually, you know what? I might still, yeah, I still have it up for this ring. <laughs> so a uh, little bit of a cheat, what, not technically a cheat. It's a tool that you can use in Minecraft. So I used world edit and schematic uh, because we just kept messing up. <laughs> We lost count of how many times we counted the circle. So, uh, yeah, that was a fun adventure. So we just have kind of the rough shapes in, and then we're going to build them out as platforms inwards, uh, at least for the main central orbit. And then the other thing is um, we're going to break the bedrock off the top so that we can just walk straight into each of these except for, whoop, except for one. One of these has been deactivated. Uh, because it is dangerous to go in this one. This is our wither rose farm. <laughs> so Pants did some magic there with mushrooms to delete that end gateway so nobody ends up inside of a wither's face, which I appreciate because uh, as we were working on this project and in the schematic, I was losing like where I was and I did fly through a couple of the gateways while we were working up here. So fighting arena that's not going to change too much the end orbits and then the city now everything up to i, uh, I can't quite remember y64 i think is going to be safe from the resets so even if we want to build some kind of like support or something um around the lake it can go up near the towers and not have problems um and then anything out here we're gonna try and keep lower the one exception is this tower here. We're going to call it the entrance tower. And what we're hoping to do is to have this entrance tower because we have to account for this five by five, um, I don't know, landing, landing pad. <laughs> we'll call it the landing pad. I don't know. There's so many new areas here that I don't normally talk about, but we're going to turn the landing pad into a tower that also incorporates the orbits. Um, so the tower is going to go all the way from the ground where the city is. It's going to connect to the tunnel that goes out to our ender ender up to the entrance portal, across to the fighting arena, so that if we have to travel by foot, we can access all levels. We can get to the, uh, end, the end islands, the entrance, the ender ender, the city, or the fighting arena. So this is going to be kind of like the city center. Um, and then other than that, it's really just whatever anybody comes up with that's super futuristic and uh, that they have fun with. So the carpets I did the footprints with, but then I also went through and kind of came up with just general shapes and ideas for like build heights. Um, so like this one over here has like a diagonal slanting roof. Um, and then this is the one place directly beneath me where the white wool doesn't mean anything uh, because I needed it to get 
to, to figure out the geometry of that build. <laughs> I have seen those three interconnecting triangles before, uh, and in my mind it made sense to, do, to draw it out with three different colors. But everywhere else, the white wool is for city parks so that we can have some green spaces to like a real city of the future would presumably have. So anywhere where you see the white wool is for recreation spaces, and also I tried to get one of the parks near each of the cardinal directions to access the central uh, water feature. So there's like a nature walk here and then there's going to be like a, uh, you know, a dedication area here with an actual build. And then on this side, the park is actually split into two symmetrical uh, side parks and then the big, big park back here. So other than that, like I mentioned, the pink and the cyan don't actually have any purpose, <laughs> no purpose whatsoever, other than to look like a light bright or Pac-Man or basically some kind of really crazy retro uh, map. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm a little bit delirious. I stayed up way past bedtime two nights in a row trying to finish this because I genuinely finally had a bunch of inspiration. And seriously, I as I was starting this, I was seeing some of these builds come together, which is why, oh, I didn't even talk about the wool. So the carpet is the footprints, but the wool in each one of those is kind of like pseudo buildings. So let's come over here. This is probably the most interesting one. Um, so basically what I did was as I was laying out the wool on the, uh, or on the carpet on the ground, uh, then I made little like roughly scale models. Uh, so the idea for this one is that there's going to be a lower building with two towers on it that are connected by like a sky bridge here and that's why it's done in a different color is so that I could distinguish it on my little model um so yeah so I have absolutely no idea how long any of this is going to take us but ouch oh gg uh but I have a lot of ideas and I want to get started so I'm gonna go get some sleep and then I'll be back tomorrow to do more minecraft do 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 be right back and we're back where we started this week because I have one last update. Uh, it's done! Look at this! Burke was an absolute madman and grinded out the last several um, stripes, strips, uh, chunks. Not even chunks because chunks are 16 by 16, but this project had so much digging. So uh, Bert came in and he got himself a new computer and he hasn't been able to stream from it yet. So he did a test stream where he came in and finished off this last section. And it was so good to see him back streaming and also to see this final result. This is just absolutely crazy. So uh, you'll remember, hopefully from the beginning of this episode, if I did a good enough job explaining that the plan for the ceiling is just to leave it exposed bedrock and now we do have a couple places where it was kind of hard to see when we were up close. So we'll probably pillar um, on uh, like temporary like scaffolding or something to get the last couple blocks. Unfortunately, it's just it's not quite all gone, but oh my goodness, it looks insane. Uh, so we've just got a couple little blocks left, but we're going to leave the uh, bedrock ceiling completely exposed and we're gonna leave the lava pool down here and the nether fortress, that was hard for me to say for some reason, is gonna be completely exposed like this, uh, like it is a, uh, a remaining artifact from, you know, this whole area, kind of like a ship in a bottle. <laughs> uh, which made me think, what should we do around the edges to polish this area off? And I pitched an idea to Burke that I think, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I haven't been over here since he took out the tunnel. <laughs> uh, that's the that's the way we're supposed to get to the farm. I, I do a shortcut usually, but I hadn't seen. I, that's 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 the way to get to the nether tunnel system. I'm so sorry. I'm so distracted. Uh, but I pitched an idea to Burke that I think he likes, and so we'll we'll see what the other members of the ouch. Okay, well obviously I can't fly into the e exit. Uh, but we'll see if everybody likes the idea that ship in a bottle 
kind of concept got me thinking, what if we do a gradient of glass from the bottom to the top so that where um, the open nether is, we'll still see out, but the gradient would be red and orange and yellow. Uh, so basically I thought about using just orange, but I want it to like really, I don't know, be dynamic. Uh, that's going to be a lot of glass though. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to ouch, see if anybody else has a good idea. I mean, we could just do straight up blackstone or, you know, make, make it all symmetric all the way around. But I liked the idea of being able to see out into the nether because that, uh oh, oh. Hello. Uh, that will play into what we did with the nether tunnels also, um, to be able to see out into this open area. So got one last final decision to make for this farm and then dressing it up. Uh, Vert hasn't been able to play for a while, so I might uh, reach out to him and see if I can design something for the storage if, in, if he's not available, just so that we can finally have like the full effective farm the full you know afk session and um gather all the storage for it but for now that's gonna have to be it because there was several big projects that i tackled this week um in the end was the big one for me but i did also help with a bunch of digging so I am tired. <laughs> My Minecraft bonesies are worn out. Next week, we will get started on doing some building. Uh, in the meantime, though, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and thank you for spending some of your time this week with me.